Now on the Southern Star podcast, it is a real pleasure to have a member of the 1997 Senior County Championship winning team from Barra, the Bear Division, uh, a team that overcame the mighty Castlehaven after a replay to win that title. Uh, it was a fantastic time for Barra football. It was also a fantastic time for their under 21s. They were winning counties around the same time. And a lovely arc uh, means that next Sunday, uh, uh, during at half time between in the Premier Senior Football Championship County Final Park Equipe between Nemo Rangers and St. Finbars, the Bearer team of 1997 will be honoured at halftime in front of what's certain to be a huge crowd. Uh, joining me on the Southern Star podcast this week is one of those, one of Bearer's most important members of that title winning team and also the top scorer from the 1997 championship, which is something I didn't realise until I did my research. But inter- former Intercounty Cork star, All Ireland winner, Bera and Orhan star as well. Uh, Kiran O'Sullivan, thank you very much for joining us here on the Southern Star podcast. How are you? I'm good, John. I'm good. Delighted to be here. Yeah, you didn't, you don't remember being the top scorer in that particular championship, do you? I could see from your reaction. No, absolutely not, to be honest with you. I, I'm poor to remember that anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought, look, it's, so I was told anyway. Very good. Well, it's confirmed. Um, before we look back, let's just have a quick look ahead to, to what's happening next Sunday in Park Equipe because it's a lovely moment for you, a lovely moment for that particular panel, an opportunity to be honoured in front of a huge crowd, but obviously the chance to get together and reminisce about the good old times. How much are you looking forward to that? Because I would imagine there's some great stories to be, to be told. Uh, there is, Joe. I mean, I'm very much looking forward to it, as I'm sure everybody else is. You know, it's, there's a lot of buzz around the place, actually. You know, there's a, there's a WhatsApp group out there at the moment, so it's it's hot and heavy. Everybody's <laughs> looking forward. Barry Murphy and a few more have organised the, the the bus and all that heading heading up from Castle Bear on, on on Sunday morning. So yeah, it's all systems go. So we can't we can't wait really. Um, you're well used to travelling the road, as are all the members of that panel. That bus is going to get there on time, yeah. Well, we we hope it will anyway, Joe. To be honest with you, um, yeah, there might be one or two stops, but I'm sure it's leaving fierce early in the morning anyway. Someone told me today, Seamus Harrington, Seamus Smithy told me today. He said, the day of the match, he said, the bus left. I'm not quite sure what time, but he said it's leaving earlier. He said next Sunday, or we're not playing at all. <laughs> well, that's that's good organization as ever from the Bear Division. Good organization. Yeah. Um, Kieran, you had a, look. You were blessed to have such a glittering career at intercounty level. Uh, you won all earned. You were part of a fantastic Cork setup. I know how important Orhan is to you, your club team, but I also know how important Bear is to you and, the, and Bear of football. In 1997, there's a couple of things I wanted to ask you. First of all, winning a county is not an easy thing to do. Even, and it was straight knockout back then for the people, younger uh, watchers and listeners of this podcast may not realise. Now we have a round robin, there's a couple of matches. But back in 1997, it was knockout from day one right the way through. And you did not have an easy path to that final. Um Firstly, I didn't realise either until the research that you played in the Kelleher Shield as a division, which was a big thing uh, back then because divisions don't normally get together that often. How important was it to have a regular set of games heading into that championship? Uh, Jerry, it was hugely important because otherwise we wouldn't have played together as a team. You'd have all individual teams playing within the division, obviously. But it was great. And we travelled all over the county and we, we also played challenge matches outside of the county just to make sure that we would have games together as a team. And that's that's exactly what's due to us for years. Um, can I ask you, because, you know, when you're part of a divisional team, there's rivalries. It's the same with Carberry. It's the same with Duhallo. It's the same with Car. It's most green. No, it is. There's rivalries with the clubs always coming across each other. There's always an intense rivalry. And there would have been an intense rivalry. How how did you manage? Who uh, What did you get? How, what did you do to, to merge and keep the divisional team together as a club? Because I remember on your path to that particular final, because Clannock Kilty would have won it the year before, like it, you were a division, but you seemed and acted like a club team. Is, is that fair? Yeah, I suppose that would be fair. I, I think we were very lucky, you know, at that time who we had involved and, and Don Lossall and Don Butcher, as he'd been known, hmm. and Johnny Hoolan and, and Barry Murphy. And like they would, they, they were a great bunch involved. So they made it easier for everyone else. I suppose we were very lucky as you said, we played in the Keller Shields, so we had played numerous games together before we got to championship. Um, but like any divisional team, I think momentum, like we got over the first game against Clyde by mm. a point, just about, just about. And we got on the next day, then we played against the Piercy. We won at the end, well up half time. Kaja Crowley saved two penalties the second half. They came right back into it. We won. So the momentum was with us. And I think the longer a division is involved, you know, um, that you're playing together, um, the easier it is, to be honest with you. And, and that helped in our favour. And I think the management made it very easy for us. 
Yeah, it, it sounds like they did because, as you said, you did not have it easy. That, that in the Pearson game, there was a lot of penalties. The first day out against Clyde, by your own admission, you didn't play particularly well, but you got over it. And then you, may, you met a Duhallow team in the semifinals. And back then, for people who don't know, in 1997 and pre-1997, do Hallow would have been the division to beat uh, in that particular in, at the senior grade. It likes Danny Cullity, Cork Star playing and a few others. Um, I don't, I'm not asking you to remember how that game went blow for blow, but coming into the Do Hallow game, Do Hallow certainly would have been favoured, but you won 15 points to seven. That, I mean, that must have given you a real boost beating a team of that quality going in against the Haven. Oh, it, it absolutely did. I mean, we, we all know, like you said, Do Hallow have always been a fantastic division. They've always put great emphasis on the division. I suppose John Fenton Daly really has worked used to work very well with them. Um, and we mustn't remember or forget that time. Anyway, Ali, Ali O'Sullivan, Ali Ruesh, he played with us that day. But I mean, he had been set off in the Nepusha game. So we thought we were going to be down Ali that day against Dohalo. And so there was fierce pressure put on Paul Hanley from my own club, who um, hadn't played in the, in the previous two games. So he came back for that game in McCroom and he had a stormer. And Ali ended up playing, thanks to the late... Jorvat and, and Mick Rennes and these people, thanks to Mick, Mick is still with us, um, you know, who worked and, and made sure that Ali was playing on the night. And um, Paul Hanley came back, as I said, and had a blinder. And um, if I'm not mistaken, he ended up marking Danny Quality. And uh, yeah, we, we, we finished very strong that night and it was all systems go then for the, for the final. Before we talk about the final and who you were playing and where you played it and who the amount of people you played it in front of, does the fact, or can you remember, did the fact that Bantry, O'Donovan Rossa, Castlehaven, and Clonakilty in West Cork had won the county title coming into 1997. You would have seen a, you would have had a good look at all these teams, not alone in the Keller Shield, but you would have seen them in championship. Did you feel like you were up to that mark and that your time was coming and that you were capable of winning it? Well, I honestly think we did because we were we were always coming closer and closer as we were going along. Like we had been beaten the previous year by UCC, mm. and I think below in Bantry, and. That was a very close margin. And like even previous to, to 97 and 96, I'll have to mention a club man of my own here, DJ O'Shea, God rest him, he's gone, he's gone from us now. He, he died suddenly during COVID. DJ was also involved with the Beira team. So it had been building over time right up to, to 97. And we always knew we had a great bunch of players, but you still have to go out and you have to play and you have to compete and you have to win. And um, we felt ourselves that we were good enough but we needed to get a small bit of momentum going as a division. And that's why I think it was so important that we won them a couple of games. And like you said, having seen other West Cork teams going up and, and um, winning the county, we were saying, why can't it be us? Mm. Just why can't it be us? And, and I suppose we just, we put our shoulders to the wheel basically and, and we drove on. I remember that time being a bit younger than you, not much younger than you, but a little bit younger than you back in that day, at that time when Clan won it in 96 and when the other West Cork teams won it. But I also remember your under-21 team, Kieran. I remember Bear being the best under-21 team in the county. And they won a county in 97. They'd won as well uh, the year before, I think. But how important was it that you had the likes of Brendan Jarrah Sullivan? That's just one name now of a, of a very, very talented Bear under-21 team maturing around 97 because it added to what you already had. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, you, we had a, we had a, we had a big mix of, of I suppose of, of ages on the team on the senior team of ninety seven. But as you said, it built up from from another twenty one stroke senior senior team. But you have to you have to have that. You know, to be honest with you, um, we were very lucky. There was a lot of work on a bear. Like all the talk has is about the ninety seven senior team. The under twenty ones won the same year. A week later against Bishopstown, you know, in, an, in a county under 21 again. So at the time, there was a load of football being played, a load of football. Like the, the, the Tuesday night before the, the county final, we all got together and we trained in, in Castletown Bear. 42 people were tugged out that night training. Wow. Which, yeah, between under 21 and, and the senior team. So I'll tell you, like, it was a, it was a, a build-up for years, right, which was finally coming an end, you were guaranteed nothing in the final, I would say. Mm. But I mean, that's how many trained on that Tuesday night, and people had traveled down from Cork, you know, to do that. Um, because they felt we were we were so close, and there was a mix as you said yourself, the under 21s. Um, and even if we went back further, we, we were very lucky going back and going back as far as 1988 now, where we won a minor county. It was the first minor county the Bear ever had, had, had won, and we had a man called John Nolan 
originally from Cargilline. Um, he's manager of the Castlemere Fishermen's Co-op, but John was in charge of us that time. Very shrewd man. And there was, a, you know, a lot of the group of 98 were still involved here, or of 88 rather, were still involved in, in 97. So you could you could go back that far nearly and say that, you know, that group of players, not everybody, obviously, but a lot of them stuck together and were still involved in, in 97 again. That's brilliant. I mean, going back that far, that just, show, that just shows you the connection that was within that particular group. And when you add in the likes of Brendan Gerrard Sullivan and all those young fellas yeah. that were used to winning, I think you need, you know yourself, you need that winning mentality, that kind of young fellas coming onto the panel. Sometimes it gives the established players that boost that they wouldn't have had in a while when they see no fear. Was that the case with those young fellas that they just didn't have any fear? They just went out and got on with it? They, they had no fear, but you know, isn't that what you want? I yeah. mean, I'm sure lads are apprehensive. You know, you, you're going to have somebody nervous since you go out into, into any match. But I mean, you can't, you can't fear anyone. You respect every player and you respect, you know, but you have to go out and, and without any fear and go out and play. And these lads, as you said, they were great footballers and Regan, Brendan Jur, and, and plenty more. And they had actually won. Here we go again. They were going back. And in 88 as well, they had won an under 12 county. <laughs> right? We're it's written in the star of soccer. I'll tell you now, right? I'm really going Jeez. back here now, Jur. Yeah. So like, you know, it was a great year, 88, for, for them two separate groups. And you still had a mix. So you had really had young and old in the senior team then in 97. Brilliant, brilliant. And it's just as well you did because you talked about nervousness and you talked about whatever about the, the, the exuberance of youth. 16,000 people were in Parky Cueve to watch yourselves in Castlehaven play out an absolute thriller. I'm not going to ask you blow for blow about that particular drawn game, but I am going to ask you, do you remember where you were on the pitch? 10 points apiece. Time is up. We're into injury time. The Haven get a free. Who steps forward to take that free and what happens? I couldn't believe it because I said we were so close. And like, I happened to be involved with Cork at the time and Larry was in charge. And, and when I saw him putting the ball down, I said, oh my God, this can't be happening. Because like, Larry doesn't miss, to be honest with you. And, and I couldn't believe it when I saw it going right to the post. I said, oh my God, we've, we, we've been let off here today. I felt we didn't deserve to lose it, but that you know that that happens, and I would have put my house in it that he'd put it over the bar. To be honest with you, because he was an unbelievable player, as we all know, and his free taking was exemplary. But for whatever reason, <laughs> somebody blew it wide. Someone, yeah, and um, thankfully for us, it allowed us back a second day. And can I ask you about the fact the second day when you went on to win the replay in front of 12,000 people, which back then was a huge number for a replay, winning it 110 to 117 in the replay. The fact that it was two weeks, Kieran, uh, was that was that actually a good thing for you? Or can you remember back then? Like, I mean, sometimes as a player, you know, you know the replays come in the following week. You just get on with training during the week and it comes around very quickly. Two weeks can be a bit of, uh, you know, it can stretch a little bit. And, you know, you, there's a lot of distractions when you're in a county final, as you well know. But yeah. it obviously suited you to have that extra time. I, I think it did, but Jerry, you might correct me on this now, but uh, I think Castlebear Intermediates were possibly playing in the middle because mm. Intermediates, Castlebear Intermediates are also playing at the same time. Yeah. There was so much football going on at, at that time, so I think they were playing in between, but I, I, I stand to be corrected on that. But yeah, it is because it was a kind of an anti-climax to a certain degree. I remember when like, we came off the field in the drawing game with the dress room, of course we were delighted that we were still involved, but it, it was an anti-climax at the same time because it was a county final, you know, and all of a sudden, my God, we, we have to come back again. But it was we were we were good and glad, um, at least to be able to come back again. But yeah, I suppose the fortnight it was just we still regrouped very well. Like I said, Donald and Barry and Johnny Hull and ev everyone worked very well together and made sure that we weren't certainly getting carried away in a bit that we we hadn't won it yet and we had to go back out and do it all over again. Can you remember the feeling? At the final whistle, can you, I know there's pictures of you with your arms in the air and the cup being presented to Andy Scandal, that famous Andy Scandal. But can you remember, was it what you felt when you finally had done it? Oh my God, Jerry, was it was I never forget it. It was unbelievable because, like, first of all, the conditions were appalling. The pitch was, was so heavy. It was it was a real tough game, um, and they had chances right near the end. I mean, they had a free kick, or was it a sideline ball? I can't remember. That was put into the square. And it bobbled around and it came out. I couldn't believe it. I said, out it comes. And eventually the whistle went. It was, I, I don't know. I mean, it was every positive feeling you could have all coming together. It just was unbelievable because, you know, it had been 30 years. I mean, we, you know, Vera had won it in 67, 30 years later. 
And I never forget when that final whistle went and the, the crowd just drove onto the field. Mm. It was unbelievable. The support we had over the two days was phenomenal. Even the first night when we went back after drawing, you'd say, you know, the atmosphere would be great. There was still a crowd that met us in Castletown Bear and people along the road. But what we met the night of the victorious night going home was just, I'll never forget it for as long as I live. It was unbelievable. Yeah, great. A great night and great celebrations. Lovely memories to have and fully deserved. And before we, we leave the subject, um, talk to me about the holiday the following year, uh, the, the trip to Malaga. <laughs> am, I, am I correct in saying that, uh, no, in fairness to Bera, in fairness to the footballers and everybody involved, you raised enough funds to go on a holiday in early in 1998. I think it was Malaga you went to. Do you remember, um, I'm not going to ask you now what happened on the holidays because I know what goes on tour, stays on tour. But... Uh, how, how special was that? I mean, that was a lovely thing to look forward to and something nice to do for the group. It was great. It was a great holiday, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know how it started off or how someone even thought of going on a holiday, but I suppose, look, having had the success we had, the word someone obviously said, maybe Don Butcher himself said, look, Les, why don't we try and get together and, and, and go away? And someone said, yeah, we'll go in. After Malaga, we went. And we had a great time, let me show you, um, Ger. Yeah, and thankfully we all came home out of it, <laughs> and that was probably that was the main thing. But it was great. We we raised funds like we sold pictures, and um, everyone had so much to do, and um, we funded it. And Johnny Barry, of Sullivan, he had a pub in Glengarve. Johnny Barry's he sponsored Orn actually in 1992 when we won the county, and he sponsored Bear again in 1997, and he was unbelievable. And we all had these T-shirts going out. Yeah, we had Bear on tour in '97. We all had the t-shirts given, but it was unbelievable, the fun. But I think after the first night, I think we had to, we had to ditch the t-shirts. <laughs> I was just <laughs> going to say... We had to put on our own tops after the first night. But it was it was great. Yeah. We had great memories. And thankfully, we all came home with it. Very good. Uh, Many is the night just for posterity. I've forgotten in Johnny Barry's fantastic pub down in Glengarve. Yeah. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, look... Uh, next Sunday at Parky Cueve, as we said at the outset, uh, at halftime in the Bonsecours Premier Senior Football County Final between the Bears and the Moor Rangers, the Barra County winning team from 1997, including Kirana Sullivan, who's on here in the Southern Star podcast with us, will be introduced at halftime. Um, it's a lovely accolade. It's a lovely, lovely memories. It was great to walk, go down memory lane today, tonight, and, and just talk about them, Kiran. Before we finish up, um, you're a very busy man. You're heavily involved in Oran, heavily involved in Barra, but there's some uh, some interesting things happening in Oran GA right now. Yeah, there is. We're very lucky at the moment. Um, I'm only one of a few in a committee, right, who are working very hard. Um, but we have our junior bees um, are out against Belly Garvin a week tonight in Dunmanway. And then the following day on the Saturday, our junior A's are out in the semi final of the county um, against Kilmurray in Bantry at four o'clock. So there's there's a lot on. And even, you know, out in Beira, the Casting Bear under 17s are in a county final tomorrow. And then next Saturday as well, the Bear under 17s are in a county final. So there's, you know, in, in Bear in general, there's still a lot of football going on. So hopefully, you know, in the, in the next two weeks, there'll be, there'll be more success coming to Beira and then to the Oran Club. And we wish everybody involved in Oran and in Beira. And it's just fantastic for me personally. I know, you know, we, we've had a lot of chats down the last couple of weeks. Yeah. How great is it to see Beira football on the front foot again, Kieran? It's super, to be honest. Look, we, I was involved with, with Paul Kelly and, and Mickey also with Mickey Craig and Dennis Harrington, as we call him, Dennis Mick from Glengariff. We were involved there last year with the Beira Miners. And obviously had had success, which was sweet. It was brilliant against Bellancolic right at the end by point. And this year again, with the same squad really, but a few extra younger lads um, with the under 19s and had success against Castle Haven um, below on Bantry. So it's great. It's great times. You're guaranteed nothing, but we're very, very lucky at the moment. There's um, There's a nice bunch of lads there. And I suppose the hardest thing from now on is going to try and keep everyone together. Um, keep everyone around, keep everyone interested. I really do think that they will. There's a very strong um, bunch uh, in, in, in the clubs locally. So hopefully we'll all stay together and um, it's all good for Beira, you know, because it's great for the division. It's great for the whole place. It's great for the supporters. It's great for the area. You know, we're all clubmen. Yes, we all have our individual clubs. But at the end of the day, we are a Beira division. And um, I'm hugely proud of it. And there's a lot of people going up here next our next Sunday, Sunday week now in the, in the, in the final at halftime who are very, very proud bearer people. And, and I hope that will continue. 
Well said, and we hope that the team, the panel from 1997, enjoys the accolade at halftime. I hope the bus gets there on time, and I certainly hope, I just thought about it, I hope that bus gets home, Kieran. But for, for now, uh, Kieran O'Sullivan, or in former Cork and All-Ireland winning footballer, and Orhan and Berra, and member of the Berra 1987 uh, county winning team, thank you very much for joining us on the Southern Star Podcast. Thanks, sir. You're very welcome.